Hello, and welcome to the program. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. Today I want to talk to you about having an eternal focus. See, we as Christians are in this world, but we're not to be of this world. See, we're in it to make a difference, to be a light in a dark place, but we're not to be of it, not to be of its philosophies, its ideals, its attitudes, its mindsets, because Satan is the god of this world system. We are to be separate from the world. Again, in it, but not of it. We need to have an eternal focus, not on the things of this world. Because those things are going to be one day just burned up. They're going to be gone. They're not, they're not eternal. They don't last. But God, His Word, the things of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, those are eternal. And we need to have our focus on that. We need to disconnect from the world and focus on God. Focus on the things of His kingdom. Focus on His righteousness. That means His way of doing and being right. Focus on uh, time spent in prayer, in worshiping the Lord, loving Him, honoring Him, you know, spending time studying the Bible, getting into His presence. You know, just, we have to have that, that focus on eternity and not just think that, you know, that one day, this week by and by, then we can start, you know, thinking about it. No, we need to start thinking about it now because one, the moment you were born again, eternity began for you, true eternity. Again, it's in Christ, it's not in this world. Because this world has no true peace, it has no true joy, it has nothing to offer you as a Christian. But when your focus is on God, when your focus is on the things of his kingdom, guess what? Then everything starts to open up. Then you start to realize, you know, why you're here. You're here to make a difference, to be a light in dark place, to draw others to Christ. Because you may be the only Bible some people read, so your pages better be shining. On a daily basis, we have to have an eternal focus. In Colossians 3, 1 through 4, it says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. See, he is our life. Your life isn't isn't what consists of your you know just you know going through the motions just you know you know living a certain amount of time and dying and, and it's over with. No, your life is in Christ. You're a new creature in Christ. You have a new spiritual DNA. The blood of Jesus coursing through your veins. You're a new creature, not the same person you are anymore. As the new creature, you're to have an eternal focus. Notice it says that we are to set our mind on things above, not on things on the earth. See, there's there's a, a saying in the world that people. Are so heavenly minded than no earthly good. Well, actually, it is the opposite. It should be the opposite. Some people are so earthly minded, they're no heavenly good. Because all they do is they set their things on their mind on the things of this world, the things that are going to be burned up, things that are going to not last, that are going to tarnish, they're going to be obliterated. No, we need to fix our minds on the things of heaven, the things of God, of his kingdom, of his holiness, of his righteousness, and stop thinking about all these other things. Start Putting your focus on Him, loving and expecting His soon appearing, because it's getting closer. Because we are in the last moments of the age, the last trump could sound at any moment, and the church body is going to be glorified and raptured. Don't you want to be a part of that, the eternal body of Christ? Well, you better start preparing now, because your eternity is starting now. But the final measure of it, yes, is when we're glorified and raptured and sitting with Him. But now you can have that wonderful joy and that peace of knowing that you have. You know, that place in heaven, yes, but that also that you can walk in the victory and the joy and the peace of his kingdom right now. You can walk in eternity because you are one with him. If you are truly born again, if you're blood bought and baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you are a new creature in Christ. You're a member of his body, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. You don't have to fear what all the things that are happening out there because God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He gave you love, power, and a sound mind. And as a part of that understanding, as you place yourself in the in the very framework of his kingdom, as you are situated in his kingdom, and you start having your mind renewed in his word, guess what? All those things that you thought were important, oh, those will just fade away into the background because nothing else matters but God. He should be your top priority, loving and worshiping, honoring him, spending time in his presence, spending time in his word, getting this word built up on the inside of you so it comes out of your mouth in absolute faith. You're not shaken by every wind of God. You're not shaken by every, you know, trolley cart that comes along, by any 
you know, as the Bible says in Psalms 112, evil tidings. No, our heart, our heart should be steadfast, trusting the Lord. We're not to fear evil tidings. It doesn't matter what epi epidemic, pandemic, you know, what bad news comes. Just know that those things are preparing the earth for the tribulation. But, but if you are truly born again Christian, you walk in as the son of obedience, and you won't be here for that. But the world is going to be here for that. And sadly, a lot of ignorant disobedient Christians because they don't have an eternal focus. Their focus is on what, you know, the here and now and how much they can get. The love of money, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of this life. Well, those things shouldn't be a part of you if you are a true Christian. You should have an eternal focus on the things of God and His kingdom. In Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Matthew 6, 19 through 21, and then uh, verse 33, Jesus said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. But where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if, you're, if, if your treasure is on the things of this world, I'm, at, I'm making money and money and, and just having all these worldly pleasures, then guess what? That's where your heart is. Your heart's going to be where your treasure is. So your treasures better be laid up in heaven. You, your treasures better be sitting at the feet of Jesus, worshiping, honoring him, loving him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. Because that's our highest calling, our top priority is that intimacy, that loving of the Lord with all, every fiber of our being. And spending time in his word. We need to be built up in his word on a daily basis. We don't need to think that all the stuff here on earth is what it's all about. It's not. If that is your treasure, then guess what? Your heart's there. And if your heart is there, then it's not with God. You, you don't have an eternal focus if that's you know what's important to you. God better be important to you, pleasing Him, worshiping Him, the things of His kingdom. And then it goes on to say in uh, thirty-three, still in Matthew six, Jesus says, "But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you." See, when we seek God first, to make sure that we're provided for the things that we need. But a lot of people are seeking the things, and their focus is on things about just getting stuff. Well, God doesn't mind you having stuff, but when those things have you, then it becomes a problem. And that's not the goal. Yes, there is true divine prosperity. Absolutely. But it's God's way. It's not the world's way. It's not trying to do it the world's way. It's not about just accumulating a bunch of stuff. No, it's not about that. We are blessed to be a blessing. That's part of it. Absolutely. But a lot of people, their focus is on just getting stuff. And then, and then then just being haughty about it and thinking, yo, look at all the stuff I have. Well, those things are not important. Those things are going to not last. They're going to be burned up one day. They're going to be gone. But what's eternal is your relationship, your life in Christ. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That means his way of doing and being right. Not your way, not the world. His way of doing and being right, which is completely opposite of this world, is completely contrary to scripture. The world's idea because Satan is the god of the world system and he has made it where where people can, you know, because he can appear as an angel of light, a lot of these things that are out there can appeal to the flesh. Well, we're not to, to walk, even though know, we're in a flesh and body, we're not to walk or live according to the dictates of the flesh. We're to live by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you live by the power of the Holy Spirit, then you'll have that eternal focus. But you're going to have to be determined not to let the things of this world and all the stuff are, that's happening in the world to discourage you, to get you to that place where you, you just, you know, say, you know what, well, I'll find out when the time comes, and right now I'm just going to live my life. Well, you can live your life, absolutely, but you're going to reap the consequences. The Bible says you reap what you sow. If you live your life for Christ, then that's what you're, that's, you're going to, you're, you're going to reap the benefits of the blessing that he's paid for on the cross. But if you live your life according to the world standards, according to just, you know, all this stuff that's out there, then you're going to reap what you sow in that aspect too. And it's not going to be something that is going to be beneficial for you, even though you may look to be getting away things and being prosperous in the world's idea of prosperity. Guess what? There's not going to be any blessings attached to it in the final outcome of it. So you got to think about that. Where's your focus? On eternity or the here and now? Think about it. And then in uh, chapter 7, still in Matthew 13 and 14, Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. 
See, the narrow way, the narrow gate, that's this word. That's the path where you stay on. It says, but you know, it says that only few find it. Only few stay on it. Only few find it, and then some that do find it, then they don't stay on it. They take detours, and they end up going to the broad way. That's the path that, if it feels good, do it. And most people take that path. Even people who are supposed to be Christian, they end up backsliding. They end up going back into the muck and mire of the world. They go back to the quagmire of false doctrine. They go back into all the, you know, bells and whistles that the flesh and, and, and the world's idea of what church is supposed to be like. Well, no. What is God's idea? What does he say in his word? That's what we're to look to. We're going to have to be focused on our eternity with Christ. And you need to start. It's not, it's not when you get there. It starts now. If you're born again, then you need to start having that eternal focus and, and, and not be concerned about, you know, if people don't understand you and that you, if you lose friendships. Well, guess what? Then they're not the ones for you anyway. The true ones are going to be the ones who are going to be a light, precious faith, who are going to understand that you, you don't want to have anything to do with the things of this world. You don't have anything to do with things that are contrary to Scripture, things that are perverse and in and, uh, you know, uh, are abominations in God's eyes. If we're Christians, we don't want anything to do with anything that displeases God. In fact, true holiness, which is being set apart to God, basically is you love what God loves and you hate what God hates. And that's a part of our eternal focus. Loving what he loves, thirsting after righteousness, thirsting after purity and holiness and things that uplift His, him and his kingdom. So that's a part of our eternal focus as well. In uh, Ecclesiastes 3.11, Ecclesiastes 3.11, the Bible says, now God says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Moses says that He's made everything beautiful in its time, and He has put eternity in our hearts. He's already placed eternity in our hearts. Now it's up to you and I to start living that pathway. To stop staying on that narrow pathway, that eternal pathway, and start walking in the righteousness that we've been established in. Because when you were born again, he's, he imputed his righteousness to you because you didn't have any. We didn't have any before that. Our, our righteousness was like a filthy rag. We had none of our own, but he gave us his. So we are new creatures in Christ, and he has put his righteousness within us. And we've been established in that righteousness as members of his body, as those who are of the royal priesthood remnant, those who have a heritage as a believer. So don't think that your life consists in just all the things that you have here on the earth. Those things are not eternal. But God, his word, his kingdom, all that he is, that's eternal. And that needs to be our focus daily. And not just when you're in a church setting, but daily in your private time, in your prayer closet, your prayer room, or wherever you have prayer, in your daily devotions, when you're spending time in God's word. See, this is need to be something that we have in the forefront of our thinking every day. He's put eternity in our hearts. Now it's up to each one of us to start living in that eternity, start focusing on that eternity and living it out daily. See, when people see that we're, we're are true to what we're confessing as Christians, guess what? That's going to draw them to him. You just, you know, trying to shove the Bible down people's throat, but yet you're not living the life. It's going to draw people away. It's going to sh show that what they think about Christians is true about being hypocritical. But we're not to be hypocrites. We're to be those who not only talk the talk, but we walk the walk. We live a lifestyle of righteousness, a lifestyle of holiness, a lifestyle of walking in that eternal focus. In uh, 1 John, 1 John 2, 15 through 17, the Bible says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Notice that. He who does the will of God abides forever. See, Jesus preached cause and effect. If you want to abide forever, then there's a condition. You have to do the will of God. What's his will? His word. You hear people all say, oh, I wonder what, I wish I knew what God's will for my life is. Well, if you own the Bible, then get into it. His word is his will. His, his word is his will. Now get in there and find out what he said and start applying it to your life. Not just hear about the word, start doing it. Be a doer of the word. You hear it, then you do it and you put it into practice. Because do not love the world. Because if we love the world, again, we're in it, 
obviously, but we're not to love it. We're not to cling to it as the as the as the all in all. No, we cling to Jesus. He's the all in all. It says, all that's in the world, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all these things, and we see it. All the things that Satan will dabble in. You know, dangle before your eyes like a yo-yo because he's the prince of the power of the air, the the uh, prince of the power of the, uh, the god of this world system, and so he does that. That's how he allures people. That's how he entices through all, through the flesh. And witchcraft is another thing that operates through the flesh realm. So all these things he tries to put out there to grab people's attention to get their focus off God. I'm not even just talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about those who are Christians who have been swayed. By all of the things that people, that Satan will put out there to entice people. And then they leave the faith. They depart from the faith, it says in First Timothy 4. And they start giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of demons. Why? Because they don't have an eternal focus. Their focus is on the things that tickle their flesh. The things that draw them away from Christ into who knows what. Well, we can't do that. So the world's going to pass away. And the lust of it. But he who does the will of God, who does this work, who has an eternal focus, is the one who will abide forever. Now think about it. In Luke 12, 15. Luke 12, 15. And Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. Let me read that again. Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in abundance of the things he possesses. See, you're not, not what your life's all about, just having, coveting everything. Seeing, you know, your neighbor or your friends, they have stuff. oh, I've got to have it too, and I have to have a bigger one. And you go around boasting about it and thinking, you know, that's what 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 is your idea of being prosperous, the idea of having a reputation of being, you know, you know, uh, like the Joneses. No, our life doesn't consist of, not in Christ, maybe the world. Their life may have consist of that. But not us as Christians. Our life doesn't consist in the abundance of the things we possess. We may have things, and that's fine. But when those things become our top priority, when those things become our focus, then guess what? Then we have stepped into that realm of, of sinning, of being, you know, arrogant and prideful and boastful and covetousness. And those things are not pleasing to God. We need to repent of those things and start coming back into our focus, the eternity that Christ has given us once we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We put our faith in the blood covenant. We've received him by faith and we've uh, uh, asked him to baptize us in the Holy Spirit so that we can be fully adopted into his body. See, our focus needs to be on that and start walking in the authority that we've been given in Christ. Start walking in righteousness and holiness. Start walking according to this word. See, God, God didn't just give us a little track. He gave us a whole Bible. It's our responsibility to get in there and start applying it, start walking in it, start having the focus of what this word says. Again, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, not your way, but his. And then everything you need will be, will be supplied to you. And Peter says that God is, as those who partake of his divine nature, he has given us exceedingly great and precious promises. Great and precious promises. Everything that we need for life and godliness is provided. Our part is to start trusting him and start having our focus on him and upon his word and not on the things of this world because those things are going to pass away. But again, those who focus us on God and his word, we're going to be abiding forever, and forever in eternity. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, Romans 12, 1 and 2, very familiar scripture we we talk about this a lot. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, we're to present our bodies, all that we are, as a living sacrifice to God. Supposed to say, Lord God, prepare me to be a sanctuary unto you. I want to be a vessel of honor fit for your service. So let your holy fire refine me and remove the chaff, remove the dross, and empower righteousness and holiness within me. I want to be a vessel that you can use for your glory. It says, do not be conformed to this world. I mean, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world system, which are all satanic, but be transformed by renewing our mind. What do we renew our mind in? God's word, his presence. 
It says, then you prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Because his perfect will is his word. So when you renew your mind in his word, then you are showing forth his perfect will. You are living it out. Think about it. And that's an awesome thing to understand. But again, your focus has to be on God, and you need to get in his word. Don't focus on, you know, all these different things out there. And I'm saying everything out there secular is 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 bad. Most of it is. But there's some things that are okay. But even the things that are okay, that are neutral, if you have your focus on them to the point where they become idols and you leave God out of the equation, then those things become wrong. And they become your focus. And if that if your focus is anything other than God, then guess what? You're in a bad place. And you will reap what you sow. It's just that simple. Again, Jesus preached cause and effect. God says, I've done this. Now, if you'll do this, then this is the result you'll get. See, we have to have, understand this. That's why all the ifs in the Bible, you need to highlight them, underline them, or whatever, because those are God's conditions. Now, his love is unconditional, but his promises are conditional upon us walking in obedience to them. We have to have the eternal focus. In uh, Mark 8, 34 through 37, Says, when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. But what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Think about it. What if you gain all these things out there? But yet, you forfeit your own soul. You lose it all. Your eternity is, is not with God, but ends up being the lake of fire. What good is all having all these things? Nothing. It says we have to take up a cross and follow him. We have to be those who lose our lives for his sake. Not save, not think that, oh yeah, I have to, you know, save my life. I have to, you know, stand up for myself and defend myself. I have to be one, you know, has to have all these different things. I have to catch up with the Joneses. I have no, no. Not that has nothing to do with walking as a Christian. That is all about the flesh. That's what the world does. The world tries to, you know, to look to their reputation. Well, read in Philippians, Jesus made himself of no reputation. And we need to do the same because we're crucified with him. We don't live anymore. The life we live, we live by faith in him because he loved us and gave himself for us, as it says in Galatians 2.20. We have to understand this. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What will profit if we gain this whole world? We gain the things of the world. But yet we lose our own self. We lose our eternity with Christ. Guess what? What's it going to profit? Nothing. There's nothing that's more important you know, than God and having our eternal focus. There's nothing more important. Because if you let those things overtake you and be your, your goal to be the not priority, then you're going to end up, if you don't repent, of losing it all. And being here for the tribulation. And probably taking the mark of the beast and then end up to the next stop, which is the lake of fire. And these things are coming. This is not fairy tales. This is true. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready now. The Bible says that uh, there's going to be a crown of righteousness given to all those who love his appearing. It means you have to love. You have to be expecting his coming. I'm just thinking, oh, you know, count me in. You know, we'll all find out when the time comes. You know, it doesn't matter when it is, pre, mid, the end, or, or whatever. It just count. No. We have to know these things. We have to be expecting and loving his appearing which is the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. We have to understand, you know, all these things that the scripture lays out for us so that we can now have an eternal focus. Not wait till we, we get there because then you may not get there because of, of, your, of your ignorant attitude. And that's just the plain unvarnished truth. We have to have an eternal focus. It starts now. It started the day you were born again. And if, it didn't, and if you have neglected to walk in that, then you need to repent and start walking it now before that last trump sounds. In John 17, 1 through 3, Jesus spoke these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. As you, gave, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life as to many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So that's eternal life, that we may know him. See, the highest calling of a Christian is knowing the Lord, loving him, worshiping, intimacy with God. That's our highest calling. 
in Matthew, Mark, in different places, it says that, uh, that's the greatest commandment. To love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. The, on those two com commandments hang all the law of the prophets, Jesus said. Our top priority is loving him. That's what eternity is. That's a part of our eternity now with him, is having that divine in intimacy with him and being to time and prayer in his word. Nothing's more important than that. Nothing's more important than him. Have your focus on him. He's the eternal life. And he he is saying, you know what? Come and spend time with me. Put your focus on me. Put your focus on my word. And when you do, guess what? All the things you need, yes, they'll come and they'll be added to you. Absolutely. But don't focus on them. And definitely don't focus on all the evil things out in the world and thinking that you have to have a, a, a piece of that. A lot of people want a piece of the pie. Well, guess what? You have the, 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 the greatest full measure of the, of the Bible, when you have God's word, you have him living in your heart, and you have a, a, a true relationship with him. Think about it. That should be your focus on him, the things of his kingdom. In uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, the Bible says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. They're eternal. Why? Because all the things of the Spirit are eternal. We may not see them with our natural eye, but we're not supposed to be looking through our natural eyes in that aspect. We're supposed to see them through faith, through the now faith. Through the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, they are eternal. And those are the things we have to fix our minds on. We have to fix our minds on the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Fix our minds on spending time in prayer and fellowship with God, communing with Him, loving Him, honoring Him. The things that, you know, and yes, there are the works of faith. We are, yes, to, you know, to, you know, preach the word, to witness, to go forth, and to lay hands on the sick and see Him recover, to cast out demons, to and, you know, minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit to evict false doctrine. See, yes, there are also works of faith that we're to do. And we'll see signs and wonders following. See, we have to have an eternal focus. We, ha we can't have a focus on just, you know, all these pleasures of the world, which, though for a moment, they may seem like they're, they're, they're doing something for you. But, that, but in the end, all they're going to do is cause you to miss out on the full measure of the reward that God wants to give you. From the foundation of the world, he's planned it. A lot of people are going to miss out. Well, I don't want you to miss out. That's why I want to tell you that you need to start from this day forward. If you haven't started already, to have your focus shifted. Focus away from the things of this world. Even though you're in it, you're not to be of it. And focus on God. Focus on his word, his kingdom. Again, his righteousness. His way of doing and being right. And then, yes, God will supply all your needs. Because that's who he is. He's the blesser. But our part is to trust him. Our part is to obey his word. That's how we show forth our love to him. And to start walking in it. Again, don't set your mind on the things of this earth. Set your mind on things above because you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Because when he appears, then you're also going to be with him in glory. But that but that process of fusion that began the, the day we were born again is daily coming forth. And we're being infused. And we're being in that place of divine, supernatural alignment with him. And the final process of that fusion will be completed when we're glorified and raptured. But eternity is, is been put in our hearts now, and we need to walk in it. So from this day forward, stop looking at the things of this world. Stop, you know, thinking you have to be a part of it, and start being a part of the kingdom of God, which is in true righteousness and holiness. So, and always remember Isaiah 40, verse 8. The word of God stands forever. Amen.